So uh, I'm very interested in the machine learning track. Okay. It's good to be that you have some experience, some introduction, that's better. Starting to work on what you know is usually better than starting from scratch, which can also be possible. Okay, anybody else? Okay, can, okay, let's just start with describing or defining what machine learning is and which, so uh, machine learning is just a subset of a data science. It's just a field where we study and we uh, analyze how we can extract values from a data. And it suggests, it's just suggests methods and practices to train some algorithms and on this data and solve some problems. Like for in our case, we are trying to perform a Twitter analysis. So our problem here we try and solve is just analysis. So we we suggest methods and practices to train this algorithm and to train the data we have. So machine learning is just a field where we extract values from a data. And but basically we we train a program to make a decision with minimum or with no human intervention. So we are trying to automate the whole process with a machine. So, uh, okay. So what's system thinking? Uh, system thinking, whenever we're working on a project, whenever we have a big project on our head, on our hand, then we need to have, have a system, a good system thinking and system thinking is just it's just your ability to practice or examine a whole problem and rather than focusing on isolated problems so when we have a big project that we are trying to work on or we're trying to solve then it's so in our case this week we are working on twitter analysis we have different uh projects different content uh, sub different uh, groups that we are working on. We have the data cl cleaning, data prepping, we have the machine learning model, we have, we have the deployment. So in system thinking, we need to have a bigger picture of this whole project and how they are interrelated to each other. It's just an approach to analyze that focuses on the way a system constitutes parts interrelate with each other and how the system works over time and within the context of a larger system. So instead of focusing on the email projects only, we need to focus how the email is related to the data pr preparation and how the email is interrelated to the data deployment. So uh, having a bigger picture is what system thinking is. So in traditional thinking, we only focus on different problems and how it affects the, the second the second problems. So the, it's just a cause and effect uh, thinking, but in system thinking, we we also focus on how the second problem or how the second project affects the first one. So how it's, the whole system is interrelated, and we need to have uh, a bigger picture of the whole project and how they correlate on how they interrelate with each other. So that's uh, system thinking. And when we're working on big projects, this is a big character that we need to have, and we, it's best to develop this skill as early as possible. So when we're working on a project that is a structured project, we have different processes. We have tax, tasks that that are works that needs to be done within a defined period of time and within a predefined outcome. And we have process that we, uh, we which are a set of task, tasks that are performed on over time and that are chained or could be simple or complex way. And we have a workflow. A workflow is just a general description of, as, as just a general work, work uh, relationship of processes that improves the efficiency. It's just how uh, the overall system works and it describes how the process that we are going to follow. And a pipeline is just a set of workflows. So when we are working on a project, we need to have a structured approach and we need to have a plan when starting on working on a project. 
So, uh, like I said, workflow is just a breakdown or of processes that are continuous processes into suitable into manageable categories. So, breaking down big projects into a small piece of projects that we can manage and categorizing this into that uh, into uh, easily manageable and automatable tasks and such tasks overall need to be done to achieve the desired objectives. So a workflow can ha can be done to achieve or to make our project easily automated and to have it to make it easily manageable. So when we're working in teams, then we usually need to have easily easy, easy management between teams and easy easy communication between teams. So when our projects need to be easily scalable and it needs to be done or to need to be completed within the, um, the, the required or the specified resource without waste. Uh, so workflow helps us to have a resource uh, management process. And if our projects need to be repeated ac across different uh, situations, for example, if we have a different if we have one solution for a project that could be adapted for another situation then we can have a repeatable that could be repeatable across a different situation and it delivers high quality outcome in a very short possible time so uh, it's just a breakdown of processes workflow and when we are performing on performing on projects we need to have a uh, break, breakdown processes that we need to have a workflow so uh, a system development life cycle when we are working on life assist a system and it has a, a cyclic development life cycle. So when we start with the initial idea, so this is where we start working on what is the idea when we start thinking about the idea and we we start the feasibility study, uh, which is an assessment or is the proposed plan actually feasible or practical. So we perform the feasible study and see that if the project plan is actually uh, attainable or performable or yeah. And then we perform the requirement analysis. It's just, this is a process where we determine what are the expectations or what are the requirements for a, a project and and then we start the system analysis. This is what this is the what the system needs to have. And before having this, the before starting the development or the design state, we des design and specify the specification or the requirements needed. And we start the design and development. So after having a development and working on the specification, we start the design and implementation. So after testing and implementing our develop, uh, de developed system, we we perform a maintain, maintenance. So we need to have a clear and uh, effective uh, system that is easily maintainable and easily maintainable across every pro platform. So after all this uh, cycle or this state is done, we need to review is the system actually as we initially initiated or is, does it meet the idea so it's a it's a cyclic process that we start we go back to the idea and see that if our project actually meets the our initial idea and in structured development so in software development life cycle is just an application of standard business practices to build a software application so it has different phases. Like I said, we have a planning stage, we have the impl design, implementation, and testing, deployment, and maintenance. And usually when we're working on projects, we tend to leave out some steps and we usually have issues whenever we're trying to deploy or when we are trying to maintain. So when we are working on projects, projects it's best practice to follow each step. So it helps us avoid inconvenience or problems whenever we're getting ahead or when we are progressing in a project. So it's typically divided into six to eight steps depending on your project. 
but the main uh, steps are the planning, requirements design, and the implementation or building the project, and then testing and deploying or maintenance, and also documentation or uh, creating a review, a review process. So this is the basic software development lifecycle. And whenever we have uh, the software development lifecycle, each development cycle needs to have a control layer. So to to have to have to see if it meets the objective and see the capacity or and or and or monitor the progress, we need to have a control objective. So each step should have a control objective or should have a set of instructions that we need to test on. So, um, so what are structured operations? So. Uh, when we are working on in teams, uh, we usually in a big project or even in small organization, we have different teams that we are work on. We work with and operation teams are just they are infra infrastructure and process owners of the organization. So they are in charge of the process and the instructions in the whole the overall organization or the overall. Uh, infrastructure of the of the organization so in system over system levels operations apply a similar principle to development cycles so when we so the previous cycles uh, that we discussed are also applied in system level so but here the outcome is different here the outcome is ins ensuring that with a minimum system interpretation and we, we performing these operations in a smooth way or with less inconvenience. So with minimum system interruption or and or an frictionless operation. So uh, they are in charge of uh, in charge of uh, creating a project that is uh, working seamlessly or smoothly. So for example, uh, let's say uh, system so operations, for example, one example is a DevOps, which uh, a DevOps could be in a team when you are working on a team. A DevOps could be in charge of enabling a self-service system for teams. So uh, they usually focus on the code on the development side. So when you are working in team, a DevOps needs to is responsible for enabling self-service and start and creating a standardized tools and process processes across the whole business. So they are in charge of the, the tools and the, the process across the business. So, and the other one is they're, they're bringing extensible automation, automation in traditional operational tasks. So they work with the developers and uh, they are uh, responsible for shaping the project. Um, and the, a DevOps, for one example, as we said, is a DevOps, and a, Devo a DevOps is uh, having a DevOps in, our, in your team is beneficial for shortening the development cycle. So having someone that handles the development cycle is shortens the amount of time that you need to work on a project. So it increases the deployment speed and that it's dependable production releases. So we have different tools for develop DevOps and uh, that are used to facilitate this. Are some of them are Docker, you can use Jenkins or Puppet. And this tools help us to automate and to shorten the development cycles. And these are very beneficial when we're work working on big, pro big projects. And these are usually helpful if you mix them with continuous integration and continuous delivery. So uh, that was the first part of the presentation. If you have any question, if you have any misunderstanding, please ask now. Are you following well so far? It's awfully quiet, so I need to have feedback to know you guys are here. Okay. Okay, I can see. Okay. All right. So, so let, okay. I'm just gonna ask you a question. So, we talked about uh, 
So we talked about DevOps and let's see how, if you guys know the difference between DevOps and any loops. Does anybody here have any idea if, what the difference is? Maybe you can draw it in the chat box. anybody uh, should i assume that most of you don't know or most of you have an idea okay yeah, that's, go ahead uh you're on mute if you're talking Ajat, you can continue. Okay, I can see that some of you don't know, then it's okay, we can talk about it. Okay, any other person willing to just describe? Hi. Okay, hi. Did you call me? You raised your hand. Uh, good, and... Yeah, good morning. Good so, morning. in a nutshell, DevOps involve continuous integrations, continuous uh, uh, continuous de deployments, and then but MLOps involve both CI and CD, but uh, it has another another aspect to it, which is continuous training, training the model in case the model mature or degrade due to due to data environments or change in data profiles. So that would mean yeah, there's another aspect to it for, that, is, that is different from normal system, I see, you know. system operation, software system operation, which is continuous training. Thank you. Okay, thank you. That was a, a, a description. I can see some of you have to wrote in the chat box and I said DevOps is for general software engineering task and MLOps is specific to machine learning projects. Yes, that's correct. That's the bigger picture, but what does it mean actually on a deeper level? So Zalalam said DevOps brings together the development, testing, and operation aspects. Yes, that's correct. So Hirmila said in MLOps data is involved, exactly. While DevOps, you're, you're basically concerned with code. So yeah, that's that's one, yeah, that's one difference. That's a good one, Hirmila. MLOps are methods used to streamline the measure learning. Yes, that's correct. And DevOps in. Yeah, some of you, I can see that most of you have some understanding. That's good. So, uh, in DevOps, we are mainly concerned in on the code and we are concerned on automating the code in, in DevOps, I'm sorry. But in MLOs, we are, the code is also there and we also have a model and we also have the data. So, so MLOs is DevOps plus data and we can simply describe it as that. And uh, so when we're working in a big company, we usually have different teams that are working on data engineering or email engineering or app engineering. but but some small companies, this might you might a, a one person might need to do all these tasks, or a, a single person might be performing all of this. And a data engineer is usually responsible for the curating data or cleaning the data or anything that's concerning the data is the data engineer task. And an, an email engineer usually works with taking the data as an input and creating and designing a model and training a model so an email engineer usually works with the model so you might be this whole functionality or this whole functions might be performed by a single person if it's a small company but if you're lucky in a big company most of them are separated and this might be described as a, a software engineer or an app engineer and this is just the, the whole, the bigger picture of the system. So, an Amy Loops, it's 
it's just a DevOps applied to machine learning, like we said, and like most of you said, it includes data and model management. So in MLOps, it it's concerned with the model development. And after this model development is completed, and if you train the usually after the the, the model development, we follow up with the training and different operations are performed here that are used to train and we need to continuously train this model to have an, uh, the output that we are that we are looking for and we need to have a training we need to have a continuous training and we, we need to be managing all of this and we need to deploy this model so a devops is concerned with all of this that that includes the uh, development, the training and the deployment. And also after even after deploying the model, we need to see if the prediction or the serving is actually as as required or as the user is intending it to be. And we need, even after the deployment, we need to have a continuous monitoring on or continuous uh, assessment. So a, Dev a DevOps is in charge of all of this process. It's just uh, an email is, uh, I'm sorry, and Amy Lopes is uh, responsible for all of this. So, an Amy Lopes is just a DevOps plus uh, data and model management person. So, it includes the data in the model. So, uh, when working on machine learning projects, we usually focus on the code. Uh, you think that um, it's just a code, and it's just this are the the whole uh, component of an Amy Lopes is. It includes all of these components, and and writing code is just a simple and some compo some part of the component. We have uh, testing and debugging. We have the model analysis. We have monitoring even after the deployment, and when we are training, we have feature engineering, and we have to also work on the data and data collection, data verification. So, an ML code is just some part of or one component of the the whole system. So in MLOPS workflow, uh, so the, the first step is uh, the development step. So here we have a uh, different data and models. So the management and we start with the model development. So if here we have different type of codes and we have different configurations and we work on the modeling and creating uh, that is suited for the business plan and we after the development of the model we train this and this is the training operation that we need to to better the model so we have continuous training we have the training pipeline here we need to perform continuous training with the data and with model having different data we use different data for training and for testing or developing the model so after we're done with the continuous training and we have a registered model, we deploy that model, and we have uh, we have packaged we have serving packages that are that are outputs of the deployment, and we we predict the serving. So is uh, is our model actually meeting our goal? Is or our users interacting with the model, or does it meet the business objectives? So and we check the serving of the model of the or the prediction and we continuously monitor our system so this is the basic uh, emilops workflow and uh, so emilops capabilities so the fundamental capabilities of are they need to be reliable they need to be scalable and they need to be secure those are the main reasons that we need an emilops in our system is that we need to have reliable, scalable, and secure storage and computing infrastructures. So they are in charge of handling these infrastructures. So we might have a data set or feature repository. We have the Emil metadata and artifact repos repository where we have the experiment. This is the main processes done. This is the stage. We have the experiment. So we have the data prepping. We have the model training evaluating and serving so this is we need to be uh we need to be responsible for creating a scalable and secure uh, infrastructure here we need and 
we need to have a source and artifact, artifact repositories. We need to have a continuous integration here. And this needs to be secure and private. So the whole, whole infrastructure needs to be built uh, in the following way. So in the development process, the machine learning development process. So like I said, we might usually have a data engineer in our team and the data might be handled by them. So the whole experiment and prototyping is mostly done by the email engineer or it's done in the email uh, development process. So we have the problem definition and we have the data selection and we have the data exploration. So after we have all this, we have to have feature engineering and we need to have a model prototype. And after that, we train and our model and we validate our model. So we might have a registry or we might have a data lake house or we might have different parameters or metrics and notations. So we need to have, we might have different repositories that we are we are uh, interacting with the with our model or with our trained model and the so this is the so in our training and pipeline delivery workflow we have uh, we build up project we need to have a continuous integration here in the building and integration or in the testing process and after the process of the building and the testing, we need to be performing on the deployment and uh, the validation or the acceptance testing and uh, deploy it to the production. So, uh, and after the deployment, we need to have a production deployment. So this is just a basic uh, pipeline for the delivery. So the training pipeline workflow, this diagram describes more, we can, you guys can look more into it and, and the last process is the deployment process. After the training and after the model development and the training, we have the deployment process where we have our model registry that our the model we have built and trained and we have a model registered. So this re model registered uh, is ready for the building and testing and the deployment process. And we have different model deployment pipelines. We have a pipeline that goes so our model needs to go to and and then it's ready for the deployment uh, stage and the, de the production environment. So this is just the overall uh, description of the machine learning process. We've seen the development process and we've seen the training process and this, we've seen the uh, deployment process. Now this, the last one is the monitoring process that we need even after our project or our, or our module is deployed, we need to have a continuous monitoring uh, system designed and we need to have a clear pipeline for that. So, so yeah, you guys can uh, look into this more and it's... So, uh, Amy loops into int. So this, the whole, this is the, describes the whole process of the project that we have seen, the training, the training operation where we where we are concerned with automating the process here we are uh, concerned with testing the package and testing packaging and deploying that are repeatable and uh, relatable training pipelines we have continuous training that concerned concerns repeatedly on executing the training pipelines and in response, to, in response to a new data. If so if we have a new data or if we have a new change of code or we have a new change of business idea that we need to we need to reiterate or res we are responsible for that. So so after that we have the model deployment where we are concerned in packaging, testing and deploying the model to serve to serving environment for online experimentation. So here our users might be introduced to engage the, with, the, with our system or with a production survey. So then the, the next one is the production serving. It's the, here it's all about serving the model that is deployed in production for reference. And we have continuous monitoring and we have data in model management for this served and the served module. So yeah, uh, this is 
we have different I have we have a test different reference here where you guys can check more into that and have a bigger picture and more detailed understanding of the, the topics that I've discussed here. This is just to get you guys going to give you an introduction if you if this is the first time you, you are introduced to these top, topics or concepts. So yeah, uh, make sure to have a look at these references here. They are a good resource. To, it's good if you're trying to get more knowledge or understanding of this project. So yeah, that's the that's my presentation for now. If you have any question or any suggestion, please go ahead. Okay, go ahead. Start. Can you start with your name, please? Yeah, thank you. Uh, you are here, uh, you are here, me. Okay. Yes, can you start with your name? Yeah, my name is Kaigizu Albert. I'm from Rwanda. Uh, my name is, uh, the problem I have is, I have the problem a lot of system thinking. So uh, I think that the system thinking is uh, important in everyday in software development. But I, I don't know why the most of people today still using the monolithic in system thinking or structure. I don't know why. Are you saying you don't uh, think system thinking is useful anymore? Is that what you're saying? No, I'm saying to, uh, to the system thinking, the most of people from uh, today, they're still using uh -huh. the monolithic. Monolithic one, so they're dealing with the multiple request in the system thinking. I don't know why they chose for the best method for to design a system thinking. Okay, I'm not sure if I heard you well, but uh, actually most companies are using system thinking, so it's applied in most industries and different areas of uh, different areas of profession. So it's actually well adapted and well known uh, approach. So and most it's applied almost everywhere. So so the other or the traditional way is being is not being used as much these days. Most people are using this system thinking in their project. So yeah. If that was your question, yeah. Anyone else that that have question? Okay, Prahanu. Uh, okay, uh, thank you. Uh, it's a nice presentation. Uh, from my side, uh, when we use uh, uh, MLOs, which step is must included to say or which uh, tool? We must use to say we have fully implemented or uh, fully implemented DevOps or MLOps. Can we say, can you, uh, there, there uh, specified uh, paths or number of steps there? Sorry, I was on mute. Uh, so yeah, uh, of course we the two, we have. We discussed we need to follow the uh, the workflow is that we have the development process we have the training process we have the deployment and the monitoring process and when we working on a project we usually uh, need to follow the steps and we need we have different tools for working on this steps is that we might use uh, different tools that are for example let's say you might use email flow which is an open source platform that you might use to help you with the whole um, with managing the whole machine learning lifecycle. So we have different tools that that are used to track your project or your model and your model registry, like I said. So we have different tools that you can use MLOs and you need to follow these steps that I described before that. Yeah. So the best practice is to follow the workflow. So the development, the training, and the continuous training, 
the deployment and the prediction and the monitoring. So when you are working with on a module, a machine learning module, it's best practice if you follow the steps and you use the right tools. For example, the best tool that I have found to be useful is the email flow. So you can use that tool and you can follow the workflow to automate or to manage to, to work on you. Yeah, does that answer your question? Yeah, that's great. Thank you. Okay. Uh, I think you have another question in the chat. Okay, no. Okay. Okay, Gannett, go ahead. Okay. Uh, thank you so much for your nice presentations. Um, uh, my question is uh, regarding system thinking. In which step we are using a uh, system thinking? Uh, uh, this is one of the challenge of which is uh, doing uh, some project or research on uh, machine learning is relating to that of methodology which is used. Then one of the methodology is uh, a system thinking methodology. There are different methodologies out there. But in which step we are using a system thinking a, uh, is my question. So uh, actually, it's best to have system thinking when whenever you're working on a project. And uh, as you can see in my presentation, I started talking about system thinking at first in the first stage. So when you have a project that when you are working on a new project, it's best to have the system thinking at every stage. So it's best if you have how it's, if you see the bigger picture to the whole project, if you, it's best if you see how they, the different uh, steps or phases that you need to perform or you need to uh, be doing, how they are related to each other. It's, so it's not at a specific stage per se, it, it's just what you need to have or it's the way you need to be seeing the project, the overall project at every stage. It's best if you, but it's, it could be better if you just start from the first uh, project, the first step of the project. So start having system thinking whenever you are start working on your project and have it at every stage. It's not just at one stage that you need to implement it. So yeah, it's best to have it at all the time. So yeah. Okay, thank you so much. Okay, thank you. Go ahead. Okay. Can you start morning. with your name? Good morning. Yeah, um, I have noticed that what you we are talking about is theoretical for me. Then yes. I would like to know if we can have uh, some focus session on each step. Then we we could be we could be able to know what what to do when working on the project. So I don't know if we can we will have a chance to do some practical. Of okay, great. Well, of course. So you, we will be having a practical tutorial in the afternoon. This is just to get you and to get you guys the introduction level. So it's just a theoretical presentation where you where you understand the concept and we will have of course we'll have a more practical and hands on tutorial coming uh, the uh, sessions to come so of course we'll be having one of the sessions soon yeah okay thank you okay okay Gideon, go ahead uh yes i was wondering uh today's one of today's challenges task two which requires us to produce a workflow diagram so we will be using a similar structure to the one you just presented where mm -hmm. we'll be it will be be producing a flowchart or is it just uh, just using like a, is it d descriptive or are we supposed to use a similar diagram to the one you presented uh it's it's best if you guys have your own representation of the diagram i i'm not sure if this diagram might be suited for you but um, Okay, yeah, but you can, so you can customize it for your own uh, project for this case, for the Twitter analysis. I'm not sure if this workflow diagram is actually 
what you need. So you actually need to work on that. Okay, on thank yourself. you. Yeah. Okay, do we have any more questions? Hey there, uh, I just want to say thank you. And I'm just looking forward for the second presentation, which will, I think, be more technical. And yes. uh, yeah, yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, so, so hopefully you guys have uh, some understanding. You won't be left out on the, on the next tutorial. So that's, that's the whole purpose of this tutorial. So thank you guys. Thank you, everyone. Uh, we can end the call here. We don't have any more questions. <laughs>